All right. So, uh, so first of all, let's review the trade-off between explicit and implicit solvers. For explicit solver, per time step, per time step, if you have uh, explicit versus implicit. For explicit, you just uh, have to compute a formula. You have to say, okay, uh, my next time step u n plus one is equal to everything on the right hand side is known u n plus uh, whatever, right? So everything on the right hand side is known f of u n or uh, there are usually delta t involved and a bunch of coefficients. While for implicit solver, you have to compute u n plus one equal to still you have a bunch of things that are known plus dot 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 maybe you also have some delta t times un that is also known but in addition to that you have to add a term times delta t times f of un plus one that is unknown so this is marks the difference between explicit and implicit methods and for you to compute un plus one for that you have to either solve a system of equations if f is linear or solve multiple system of equations if f is nonlinear because each iteration in the Newton's method involves solving a system of linear equations. Okay? So that's really the difference in using implicit and explicit solvers. So the question? Oh no, sorry. The the gain you get from spending that additional computing resources is what? It's stability. It's not accuracy usually, right? On so the, on the implicit side, on the implicit side, right? Usually, um, so so for the same complexity in terms of formula, you usually get similar accuracy for implicit or explicit schemes. But the implicit scheme is going to have a much wider region of stability, and that is important when you have a stiff system. So what is a stiff system? When you have the you have uh, very the very large effect and very small effect. Yeah, when you have very large effect and very small effect, that's your answer. But let's let me quantify what you mean by large and small. Yes. The time scale of two effects is very different. The time scale of two effects are very important. In addition to that, so that's what we discussed the last time when we say uh, stiff systems. Right, so so uh, implicit is better for stiff systems. Okay, and uh, uh, stiff systems mean systems that has very different time scales. If it's a linear system, you can usually quantify the time scales by doing what? How do you quantify if a system has very different time scales? Looking at the eigenvalues, right? Okay, and uh, if it's a nonlinear system, how do you quantify the time scales? Set it up as a system. Set it up as a system and do what? Find the eigenvalues. Of what? The A matrix C. So if it's a nonlinear system, where do you get the A matrix? Uh, you have to linearize, yes, compute dfdu. So if you have du as a vector, dt is equal to f as a vector function of u as a vector. Right, that's a system of potentially nonlinear equations. You want to compute the eigenvalue of partial f partial u. If that eigenvalue gives you very different, I mean, if that matrix gives you very different eigenvalues, by very different, I mean order of magnitude different. Okay, then you have a stiff system. And usually in these stiff systems, I say usually because it's not always the case. The shortest time scale is actually not something you care that much. Why am I saying so? Because the shortest time scales, unless it is an exactly imaginary eigenvalue, which means it'll just oscillate a very high frequency, right? Then it is going to be damped down 
very fast. So the shortest time scales are usually the kind of time scales that if goes out of equilibrium, it's going to be going back towards equilibrium in a very fast rate. Okay, just to imagine uh, the, the two plates being heated up at the same time. If the temperature of these two plates becomes different, they because the heat transfer in between the two plates are very fast, they'll become the same temperature in a very short amount of time, in milliseconds. While the whole system heats up in minutes, right? So so this is the, the short time scale is not something that you really want to resolve for most of the time. So you actually want to use a pretty large time step. You want to use a time step that is multiple of seconds. And you don't you basically what you're saying is you want a time step size that is at least an order of magnitude or even more than the time scale of the fastest dynamics. If that's the case, that means okay, so so if you have du dt, uh, sorry, let's say the eigenvalues of this is equal to lambda one to lambda n. Well this is the largest largest smallest in magnitude okay magnitude okay then the largest uh, eigenvalue is going to represent the fastest or slowest time scale the largest is going to have the fastest time scale I mean just to look at uh, just to look at the FDU right F and U have different units. F has a unit of the unit of U divided by T, right? So DFDU should have a unit of 1 over T, right? So the largest eigenvalue represents the shortest time scale, all right? And uh, by saying that you want a time step that is much, much larger than the dynamics of the fastest time scale. I mean, I want a lambda 1 times delta t that is much, much larger than 1. And that is only possible using implicit time integration scheme. Right? Okay, does it make sense? So, if If you are, if you use an explicit time step, right, then your lambda one times delta t has to be within the stability region of your time integration scheme, and that is usually order one, right? Even the best uh, explicit integration schemes, you can't make this much greater than let's say ten or fifteen or so, okay? And you are going to be forced to use a delta t that is dictated by stability but not accuracy. By switching to an implicit scheme, you can use a delta t that is dictated by the accuracy you want, not by stability. If you do explicit, you will use a much smaller delta t just to ensure stability, far smaller than what you actually need to get the accuracy you want. All right. 